Ah yes, Quark, everyone's favorite Ferengi, one of Star Trek's most iconic aliens and one who single-handedly changed the perception of his entire species. Played brilliantly by Armin Shimmerman, Quark was something of a linchpin character whose bar served as a forum for all other characters on Deep Space Nine. He would go on to become a much more layered, complex, and sympathetic character, but more on that later on. Since he was such a prominent member of the show, you might think we know everything there is to know about him, but there's actually actually many interesting tidbits that went under the radar. Some of them are in-universe details, while others are behind the scenes. And with this list, we're going to look at the 10 most fascinating. With all that being said, I'm Bree from Trek Culture, and here are 10 things that you didn't know about everyone's favorite Ferengi bartender, Quark. Hello, Ensign Tom Larkin here. And with a brother like mine, you don't get an awful lot of rest on a starship. We've almost fixed the thing with the Tribbles. But I look like I haven't slept in months. Now, thankfully, I have invented something that'll help. Don't tell Starfleet. Come up with me to the lab. Hello! Don't worry. It's just my special geology face cream. I've used my big sciencey brain to come up with a few products that'll make me look a little bit closer to my actual age. I've used ingredients like retinol, not to be confused with Retinox 5, hyaluronic acid and kojic acid that's helped me come up with everyday face wash, a vital morning cream, a repairing night cream, and a nourishing eye cream to get rid of those dark circles. My favorite is the face wash because it gives you just the right feeling for when you're done with the day and you're just, you're fed up of following orders and you just want to relax and don't tell Starfleet I said that. If you click the link below, it will take you to geology.com. That's G-E-O-L-O-G-I-E, -E, where you'll be asked to do a 30 second quiz. Now, don't worry, you're not gonna pass or fail this test. This is about getting the proper skincare routine for you. And after that, you can get up to 70% off a 30 day trial. Head over to geology.com, that's G-E-O-L-O-G-I-E, -E, and sign up today. You can also join the community at Geology Galaxy over on discord.gg forward slash geology. All of that is in the link below this episode. Geology is helping me to feel like the way I should feel like again. Nice try, Eddie, but you're not winning this one. Thanks very much. Number 10. Armin Shimmerman was the first to be cast. Even though Armin Shimmerman had already played a Ferengi in Star Trek The Next Generation, his audition process for the role of Quark wasn't exactly smooth. In an interview with GameSpot, he said he auditioned for the role three times in total and was getting very anxious about the whole ordeal, causing his confidence to be drained. After his first audition, he had to wait a total of six weeks before he got a callback. The second time around, he auditioned alongside his friend Max Grodencheek, who was also aiming for the same role, but of course, as we all know, ended up getting cast as Quark's brother Rom instead. Only on the third time did Shimmerman get a chance to audition in front of the show's creators, Rick Berman and Michael Piller. During that audition, the waiting room in front was filled with people who would go on to become the series' main casts, without any of them, including himself, knowing it at the time. According to Shimmerman, he was the first of the lot to get a call back from the producers. And a mere 24 hours later, Deep Space Nine had its quark. Number 9. He's younger than you think. According to Star Trek's official website, Quirk was born circa 2333 in Earth years, which makes him around 36 years old at the time of his appearance in Emissary. Now, if this were a human, you would say this man is in the prime of his life, but since Ferengi in the Star Trek universe routinely lived to be 300 years old, this suggests that Deep Space Nine's barkeep has only lived through about 10% mm, of his lifespan. Interestingly enough, he reached his age of ascension, the Ferengi version of adulthood, in 2351 at 18 years of age. So you know what? They really aren't that different from us humans, are they? Of course, it's mentioned many times that Rom is his younger brother, but his birth year is never specified. However, since Nog's birth year is said to be 2354, we could deduce that his dad was born on 2336 at the latest. Well, if we assume he had reached the age of ascension before having Nog. Number eight, he changed over time. 
At the start of Deep Space Nine and through the first few seasons, you could argue that Quirk was like any other Ferengi, strictly adhering to the rules of acquisition and putting his own profit ahead of everything else. But as the show went on, his constant scheming and swindling became less and less frequent, or at least the nature of it had changed. In the early seasons, he cared much more about Latinum than his own brother, but as the show went on, he began to show his softer side. This was most noticeable during the Dominion War storylines, especially when the Dominion Force were in control of Deep Space Nine. For example, he risked his own safety to obtain secret information from Damar in the Season 6 episode Behind the Lines. And in Season 7's Shadows and Symbols, he accompanied Worf on what was basically a suicide mission to the Dominion shipyards just to ensure that Jadzia could get into Stovacor. That sort of unselfishness and willingness to sacrifice are not the hallmarks of a Ferengi, and even Quark himself wouldn't think of doing such things just a few years earlier. This just shows how committed the writers of Deep Space Nine were to letting their characters grow and evolve over time. Number 7. His relationship with Odo is modeled after Casablanca. Michael Curtiz's 1942 wartime romance film is a masterpiece in its own right, but you would hardly call it science fiction, would you? Well, it might not be sci-fi, but it definitely had an influence on a very small, very niche aspect of sci-fi franchises. The relationship between Quark and Odo, the security constable on Deep Space Nine, is one of fans' favorite dynamics of the series, and it also serves as both comedic relief and a means to advance the plot. However, what you might not have known is that the relationship is inspired by a similar one from Casablanca. In the movie, Rick Blaine is the owner of Rick's Café Américain, and Captain Louis Ranon is an officer of the French police. The relationship between the two of them is very complicated. Does this sound familiar? The dynamic between Quark and Odo is very much of the one you love to hate variety, and that's what they brought in from the film. But the resemblance does more or less end there. The Deep Space Nine characters went their own way and became much more complex. Number 6. He appeared on a real-life talk show. Now, if you haven't seen this, please do yourself a favor and pause this video to go watch it. You're back? Great. In June of 1993, just as Star Trek Deep Space Nine's first season was coming to an end, Armin Shimmerman appeared in his full quirk makeup and costume on Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, a daytime talk show. He spends the first half of the 10-minute interview in character talking about the traits of the Ferengi species, his business aboard Deep Space Nine, and other details from the show. At one point, he even gets his ears caressed by Regis. Not sure why they didn't censor that, to be honest. There could have been children watching. Quark then leaves the stage to get his makeup removed, and Shimmerman returns as himself. He then proceeds to talk about the character, the show in general, as well as some behind-the-scenes bits. He comes across as incredibly humble, constantly giving credit to the crew of the show and downplaying his own abilities. Number 5. His name was inspired by James Joyce. As you all well know, a lot of Star Trek characters were named after real-life scientists, explorers, and engineers, but there were also quite a few of them that were named after literary characters. After all, it was a common theme in Gene Roddenberry's character naming habits. The name Quark is one of those inspired by literature, but not by a particular character. In James Joyce's seminal novel, Finnegan's Wake, there's a quote that goes, Three Quarks for Muster Mark, sure he has not got much of a bark, and sure any he has, it's all beside the mark. It was a fairly inconsequential line, but the Deep Space Nine creators liked the sound of the word Quark so much that they chose it to be the character's name. However, the science fiction ties don't stop there, since the same quote inspired Nobel Prize winning physicist Murray Gell-Mann to give the name Quark to the elementary particles of nature back in 1963. All matter in the universe might be comprised of quarks, so let's just be thankful that they're not of the Ferengi variety. Number 4. The idea for his character came from a western. If you thought that Michael Curtiz's tie-ins would end with Casablanca, you were wrong. According to Michael Piller, they settled on having a bartender character aboard Deep Space Nine early on in the show's development. For inspiration, they looked at Dodge City, a 1939 western starring Errol Flynn and directed by Curtiz. There was a character played by Frank McHugh in it called Joe Clemens. Piller and the rest of the writing staff liked the idea and started conceiving the character of Quark around Clemens, but he eventually evolved into something entirely unique. However, it makes a lot of sense to think about Deep Space Nine as a frontier town in the Wild West, and Quark's Bar is the saloon where all the shady characters come to congregate. The metaphor works in more ways than one, whether the creators initially intended that or not. First Casablanca, now Dodge City, I'm starting to think DS9 should have included Cortez's name in the end credits. Number 3. 
Armin Shimmerman hated The Last Outpost. In the development process for Star Trek The Next Generation, the Ferengi were created as the main villain species of the series, something like the Klingons or the Romulans for the original series. Their debut appearance came in the fifth episode of Season 1, titled The Last Outpost, and it ended up being a total disaster. The Ferengi came across as too comical and gimmicky to ever be considered as a real threat to the Federation, and the idea of them being the main foes was very quickly dropped. Thankfully, that was not the last that we heard of the Ferengi. They would have a further 14 episodes in TNG in which the writers slowly began to change their characteristics in order to make them a more serious civilization. However, it wasn't until Deep Space Nine that they truly got their chance to shine, and a lot of that is due to Armin Shimmerman. Armin, who appeared in The Last Outpost, was so disappointed with the script and his own performance that he made it his personal mission to right the wrong by portraying Quark as a much more nuanced and layered character. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that Shimmerman's performance as Quark, along with DS9's writers, saved the Ferengi race from being the joke of the Star Trek universe. Number 2. He was supposed to be in Star Trek Insurrection Surely one of the biggest missed opportunities in the 90s era Star Trek is that they never produced a movie with the Deep Space Nine cast, especially since there were so many possibilities that they could explore in a universe that it shared with the next generation and Voyager. While any hopes of such movie were probably put to bed by the terrible reception of Star Trek Nemesis at the box office, we very nearly got a chance to see one of DS9's characters on the big screen in a previous film. The initial script for 1998's Star Trek Insurrection featured a scene in which Picard discovers Quark stowing away on a Starfleet vessel, trying to get to the Baku planet. Always the businessman, Quark was apparently intending to open up a spa on the planet. This was brought up by Michael Piller and Rick Berman, thinking that a fountain of youth type discovery would make the Ferengi's nose for profit perk up. Armin Shimmerman even did some filming, but sadly his scenes were scrapped and deleted before the film's release. Ah, uh, what could have been? Number 1. He appeared on Deep Space Nine, The Next Generation, and Voyager. Only four characters appeared in all three of The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. Quark was obviously one of them, but can you guess the other three? Now, if we don't count The Last Outpost as officially canon Quark, then his first chronological appearance is, of course, in The Emissary as part of the main cast of DS9. His first crossover into other Trek would come in the 21st episode of the seventh season of The Next Generation titled First Born. In the episode, Commander Riker is looking for the Duras sisters, so he reaches out to Deep Space Nine. Eventually, Quark appears on the view screen and Riker ends up bribing him with some Dabo vouchers in exchange for information about the Klingon sisters. Quark's second crossover happened just a year after when Voyager's pilot aired. A part of that episode takes place on Deep Space Nine and Quark's bar in particular. The Ferengi bartender features in a very memorable exchange with Ensign Kim and Lieutenant Paris. So, have you been able to come up with the other three people who appeared on all three shows? Well, you definitely guessed Q, which is correct, and the other two are Morn and Gully. Vec. But hey, you knew that already, didn't you, you bunch of nerds? And those were 10 things that you might not have known about Star Trek Deep Space Nine's wonderful bartender Quark. If you like this video and you like what we do here, you could go ahead and drop us a like or subscribe to the channel. If you want to find us on socials, you can follow Trek Culture on Twitter, or you could follow me on Twitter at Trekkie Bree. I hope you all stay safe and healthy, and don't forget to live long and prosper.